Can you do your best to describe virtual production to someone who's never heard of it before? One sentence. One sentence. I have actually had to explain virtual production to my mum. Virtual production allows you to take any background or any location and put it... I bet he's going to Google it. Um, mm, I would say it's uh, it's essentially compositing in a in a three D space. The ability to blend together the virtual and the physical in one shoot. It's using LED behind you. And the way I explained it to her was using computer game technology to essentially build scenery. And it's using a film camera pointing at that LED, which it, which it's. She kind of understood that, but she still did ask me how many carpenters we had on site. So that when the, the, ca the camera moves... Can't use your hands, it's cheap. It's being able to create a world digitally that live physical people can interact with, and you film, and you change the environment around them as you're filming. Did I get that even vaguely good. right? <laughs>I think from the surface level, you think, oh, it's just like a bit of green screen. It's so much more than that. At Epic, we were very interested in working with Imagination uh, as a mega grant recipient because they're extremely well placed to take all of the knowledge and experience that they've got and apply that to uh, these new methods and then create and push new boundaries and come up with new ways and interesting experiences and ways of doing things. The best way to think of this is you're no longer manipulating an image, you're manipulating an object yes. that happens to be digital. So that means essentially you can do whatever you want. We've seen it used in Hollywood, we've seen it used in TV. Our objective here is to make it as cost effective for the end user in order to create compelling content, but potentially in just one location. Digital tram line here. Yes. Kind of block paving. In my experience, the only way to really understand what the edges of possibilities are is by really pushing up against those edges and seeing how hard and how fast you can push them and then just seeing what happens. Because I think it's in those moments you learn the most. Well, we need to place this tank stopper in a place that makes sense in the scene. Because we're going through pre-visualization before we actually get to shoot, we're having the opportunity to remove a huge amount of the unknowns from the process. The creative team, the technical team, any external stakeholders, lighting, scenic, all of those parties can see what is coming together throughout the process and that gives everyone complete transparency from start to finish. How hard can it go? Think ridiculously high if you need. The pre-visualisation is really important and it's a, it's a great way for us to ensure that we're able to get the shots that we need to get in and the setups that we need. So this is the first time I've used um, the screen tech and I really jumped at the chance because it actually gives you the ability to be slightly greener than you would do normally. Rather than constructing an entire set and then potentially throwing a percent of it away, this allows us to make something that we plug and play with. Where our actor actually walks, it's going to be quite firm. Here we go. When you shoot with an LED backdrop with real-time in-camera visual effects, you've actually got something substantive to work with, something tangible that the actors and director and crew can really work against. So creatively, I think that's much more uh, engaging and pleasing and will get better results and, and offer up new opportunities. What's amazing is that you don't have to suddenly reset, you don't have to wait for it to get dark, you don't have to move to another location. You can literally change the environment around them and they can interact with that environment. The opportunities are endless. When you work on an ordinary set, you, you design it, draw it, it's constructed, and to an extent it's a locked environment. This isn't. This is an environment which is plastic. So you can move it and you can move and you can react to it in real time. And that, I think, is fascinating. It's difficult to get your head around it. You know, you're creating this world, and you know, worlds have different perspectives. You know, you have up, you have left, you have right, you have down, and you have to kind of understand where you are in that space. In virtual production, we have a term that we use a lot amongst the team called thrusting, which corresponds to the camera's field of view. So that is represented by this box. Wherever the camera is seeing is sharp. Everything outside of it is kind of fuzzy. And the reason for that is we, we drop the fuzziness because of performance. It's less for the computer to think about and essentially to generate. And also, that then provides those real-time reflections and real-time lighting back onto the stage. Now can we have that backlight on? 
You know, you put an object in a space and then you light it. That can take a long time. But you put a car in a space and light it, that can take a really long time. We had a motorbike, we put it in the space and then you turn on the environment and suddenly all the light bounces off that LED straight onto the object and it just comes alive. Trying to set this shot up in the real world would be nearly impossible. The technology also gives you the flexibility with your asset pipeline. It means you can reuse assets across a number of different mediums, including AR, VR, online, even in print. We were able to take photos of the bike and it really looked like it was in situ. Within a matter of a couple of hours, we would taken an ultra high resolution still to the environment of a bridge and an environment of a beach, which you couldn't do in post, you couldn't do in green screen. So this is going to become the most carbon friendly way of doing complex multi-location shoots. You literally can be in four, five, six different global environments in one day. You, you do that over a three, four, five day shoot, you can end up with a film shot over five days in 20, 30 different environments. It's incredibly production friendly way of working. So playback. All of the software, the technical aspects, they can be quite creatively daunting at times, but they actually add a lot of creative possibilities for exciting new camera angles, dynamic lighting effects, and new ways of exploring spaces that you couldn't do if they were physical. Balance is great, and after, do something slightly warmer. Embedded in the story were a set of visual moments that would be really challenging for us to do in post-production, both on location or with green screen. But we wanted to take that challenge on using puddles and water, using neon lights, building an environment that was really complex, and also the glasses to show off the reflections. I thought the wide would have been the most challenging shot, but it's all down to reflections. They have to be absolutely perfect or otherwise they stand out. If you look up towards the taxi sign. When we initially started to see the reflections, we realised there wasn't enough contrast in that scene. And instantly our, our technical artist Jamie was into the scene to kind of change those aspects of it. But just in the same sequence, we needed July to be able to look at the sun. So you need us to be looking at it, we needed the reflection of the sun in one of her lenses coming down. And because of virtual production, we could literally say, Jamie, can we get the sun halfway down? The technology is extremely flexible. It gives you the ability to make in the moment adjustments on the software. You can make changes to the lighting, time of day, you can move architecture, and you can trigger animations on the LED scene. We were looking down the street with the sun facing us directly. I think one of the bridges was just occluding the sun a bit too much. And someone mentioned it was like, oh, it would be nicer if the, the sun would peak between the two bridges. And I said, oh, what, like this? And just move the bridge down. And they were like, oh yeah, exactly like that. I think people are used to traditional workflows when it comes to filming content. But I think once people adjust and they realize, oh, this is very dynamic and a lot of stuff can change on the fly, on the day, I think it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Jamie can move heaven and earth. When I got to the set, I was so shocked because usually we have green screen, but we have an actual set that's moving with me and we have the whole city on the screen and on the walls and on the ceiling, there's a sky. It's just such an impressive set to be a part of. And the character really seems like it represents parts of me. It's this badass female. I just really relate to it. It's um, really empowering as a woman to play a character like that. When the bike was actually delivered on set, we were quite quickly able to literally call in the different colors of the bike. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Thank you, mate. Cool. Using both a real and a digital bike gives you flexibility. You can go in close using the real bike for some shots or, or reposition the digital one deeper into the scene for the others. I think seeing where our creative teams get to with ideas and having this ability to tell stories however we want to tell them, it's made me really excited about how live events and virtual production and this digital world can really enhance these experiences for people. I think that's a really exciting thing for imagination. The thing that strikes me the most is how small it is. The fact that you can achieve something visually so robust and enormous, but shooting it in such constraints is incredible. I mean, the, if you were trying to do this in real life, imagine the type of set and location that you would need. And cut. The demo uh, setup that we have at the lab here in London, it's not a proper stage. It's a tiny little demo setup. 
to sort of play and explore and to demonstrate to people what the possibilities are with in-camera visual effects. I always see the role of technology as being able to take any idea and be able to bring that to life. Those things are now allowing us to do things that we couldn't do before and as the technology improves and reliability improves, you will absolutely be able to do full yeah. live we, we know, I mean, We know it's happening. You can see the quality of the content that's coming out of Unreal Engine, the ability to manipulate it, the ability that it helps lighting the objects around it, the fact that you can create multiple assets. Constraints are off from a creative perspective. You can do anything you want. I think it's some great opportunities for our clients. I think having them part of the process, you know, from the beginning right through to the end, they can see things happening, they can see the, the changes live. It's really exciting. I think the opportunities are limitless. The biggest benefit to clients when you think about efficiency is the ability to simplify relatively complex situations. So that could be a complex integrated campaign where normally you'd have multiple production streams potentially run by many different agencies and you can simplify that into one potentially single work stream. Because virtual production opens up all these new worlds, clients really need to consider how their brand goes into those worlds in terms of how it looks, feels, behaves. And I think we'll be the perfect guardians of their brand going into that because we'll understand all of those practical elements as well. Uh, can you just show me a fraction more? There are two things that Imagination have always been set up to do. One, always approach things from the consumer's perspective. Make sure the experience that person's getting is second to none. And of course, the second one is we have clients and it's about servicing them well. How do you do it without spending Hollywood budgets? And that's the, that's the objective here, and the team have done an incredible job making that happen. We are using cutting edge, not just leading edge technology. We are always looking at technology that is maybe still in a lab. We can take what you can do with that technology, the 3D, the real time and the, and the tracking, think about it in a story-led live setting and then produce and create experiences that bring all of that to life. And we're really only, I think, touching the surface at the moment of what, what's going to be possible with this. You know, it's not just about doing things in a, in a closed room the whole time. There's lots of opportunities to use this in a live capacity that we've barely started to explore yet. And I think we can go on that journey with our clients. If you're a student and you're working in a technical degree, or an artist degree, or an architectural degree, or you just love what you've seen here, get in touch. The tools and techniques that are now being taught in the schools is exactly what we need to create fresh um, talent and technical know-how into the business. Once people get comfortable with doing this in a new way, the conversations should actually focus much more on the creative itself rather than the technology you can create pretty interesting things um, with very modest resources. Imagine what uh, imagination can really get their teeth into next when they're working on projects with um, a full-blown studio set up and can really go for it. I can't wait to see what that brings about. <laughs>